Hi, and this is another video on how to make a game like Clash of Clans. In the previous videos, we set up a basic map and we also created a shop button that we could place buildings. Now we need to create a function to move the building around and then place it on the tile. So to start, I'm gonna go to the camera controller and like other scripts, I like to create an instance for our camera controller. So let me just copy one line from our UI shop and paste it here in our camera controller. And instead of UI shop, I'm just gonna say camera controller, same here. And here in the awake function, I'm going to assign the instance. Now let's go to another script in the UI, UI building. So we need to make sure the camera controller knows that a building has been instantiated. So let's go ahead and create a variable in the camera controller. Here I'm just going to say private boolean equals to false. And to get the value of this variable, I'm just going to create a public boolean and name it is placing building. And I'm going to create a getter and setter. And set is going to be underline building equals to value. And here in the UI building, I'm going to say camera controller dot instance is placing building equals to true. Now let's go back to the camera controller and here in the move started. So before we set the moving to true, we're going to check to see if we are building or not. If we're not building, then we can move. So we need to get the position of our finger on the screen or our mouse in the editor. To do that, let's actually create a control for it. I'm going to go to the input. Of course, we also have a mouse position and touch zoom position, but they are separated. So I'm just going to create an action for both of them. Name it pointer position. And it's going to be a value of vector 2. For the first binding, I'm going to choose the mouse and it's going to be the position of the mouse. And for the second binding, I'm going to choose touch screen and it's going to be primary touch dot position. And that should do it. I'm just going to save it. So let's go back to the script and get that position. So to save the position, I'm just going to need to create a variable vector three and it's going to be build base position. So here we're going to say in the move started build base position equals to the screen position to plane position and the screen position is going to be the value of our input. It's going to be inputs main and the variable we created called pointer position and the value of course was a vector 2. We're going to read that. And we also need a reference to the building. Uh, so let's go back to our building script because the building is the type that is going to be instantiated. So this is the building script and let's create an instance for it exactly like the other scripts we've created an instance for them. I'm just going to copy that, bring it in the building. So this is going to be an instance of the building. We could also create a setter for our building. So this will set the instance equals to the value that is going to be passed to us. So this way we can set an instance for our building. So let's go back to the UI building. And immediately after we instantiate that building, we're going to say building.instance equals to this building that we just instantiated and that is going to save that in that variable so whenever we are moving that building we have a reference to it and we can make the necessary changes so here in the building we can create a public void placed on grid and we also need another function we say let me just copy this 
and say removed from grid and we also need to create a third method let's say update position on grid or update grid position and I'm just gonna create a couple of variables and they're gonna be X and Y we have a current X and current Y but we also need an X and Y and whenever we say place on the grid we're gonna pass an int which is an X and another integer which is the Y and all these variables are going to be assigned to these values and whenever we say remove from grid the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna say underline instance equals to null and destroy the game object and we need to make sure the camera controller knows that we are not placing a building anymore so we're gonna set that to false so I'm gonna go to my grid script so build grid and here we need to define a couple of functions that is going to help us so we're gonna say public vector 3 a start position and it's gonna take an X and Y so basically you pass an X and Y and it's gonna give you a world position of the lower left corner of that position so we're gonna say vector 3 position equals to transform that position and let's say position plus equals to two values we're gonna move it on two directions the second one is going to be transform dot forward dot normalized multiplied by y and cell size and the first one is going to be transform dot right dot normalized multiplied by x and cell size and we're gonna return the position we also need to create a function let me just copy this and it's going to get the center position and this time it's going to take a height and white of course we say rows and columns so first in the get center position we're going to say get a start position i'm going to pass x and y here instead of x i'm just going to say columns and instead of y i'm gonna say rows and of course we need to divide them by the two because we want to get the center position so let's go back to the building when we place it on the grid we need to get the center position and place it there so we're gonna say vector 3 position and if you remember we already have a reference of our grid in the ui main dot instance dot grid and we're gonna say get center position we're gonna pass x y and we have rows and columns so transform dot position equals to position and we also need to create another method and let me just copy this and this is going to be start moving on grid and it's not gonna take any values so let me clear this and here I'm just gonna say x which is this x here equals to our current x and underline y equals to our current y so basically this is going to be our base x and y and this is going to be our current x and y and we're gonna change it the second we start moving uh, let's go to the camera controller here the second we get the base movement we're gonna say building dot instance dot start moving on grid and that's it and let's go to the update function let's say at the end of the script if we are building we need to get a new position let me just copy the position we've created here the position we've got from over started we saved it in this variable we need to get that position one more time and instead of that we're gonna say vector 3 pose 
and this is our new position and that one was our base position so we need to pass this to the building and tell him where to move here in the update grade position let's say we're gonna pass both vector 3 base pose and another vector 3 current position this is the position of our finger in the plane and let's go to the camera controller and call it using building that instance to update build base position and our new position and here in the building I need to get a local direction so let's just say direction equals to and we need a reference to the grid so we're gonna say main dot instance dot grid and we're gonna say transform dot transform point minus I'm gonna just copy that and paste it here so this is going to be our current pose or our new pose and it's going to be our base position and that's the direction on the grid and we need to create an integer to see how much we moved on the x and y so let's say x distance and we need to access the cell size so let's go to the grid and as you can see our cell size is private so I'm just gonna create a public getter for it so that should do it so we're gonna say cell size and I'm gonna do the same thing for our Y and it's going to be direction.z and this is the amount of cells that our hand moved on our plane so our current x is going to be equals to our x plus x distance and the current y equals our base y plus the amount of y we just moved and once more we're gonna get the center position and assign the position based on that let me just copy and paste that and instead of x and y I'm just gonna send the current x and current y now let's go back to the camera controller and here we updating position of that building on the grid but before we do that we also need to go to our move started and let's create a boolean for it i'm gonna just name it moving building so this moving building is going to be set to true whenever move starts here And we're gonna set it to false whenever we say move cancel and now let's go back here and say f building and moving building and also to set the move building to true we need to make sure that our finger was placed on that building in the plane so we need to create a function for it in our build grid so let's create another function here so let's say private So I'm gonna name it is world position is on the plane it's a little confusing name but it basically checks to see if the position that is provided is in fact on that building or not so let's say vector 3 this is going to be the position and we need to pass an x y and rows and columns I'm also gonna copy this function here and call it get end position and let's remove this division by two and that's gonna give us the end position so now the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna convert this position to local position we're gonna say transform dot inverse transform point and we're gonna pass this position now we're gonna create a rect And now we can check to see if our rect contains our position and it's taking a vector 2 so we're just gonna create a new vector 2 and we use 
position.x and position.z and here I'm gonna return true and here I'm gonna return false now we're gonna go to our camera controller and here in our move started we need to check this position which is our finger position on the screen and see if this position is on our building so to do that we're gonna say if and if you remember in the UI main dot instance we have a grid that we can use and in this grid we just defined a function to see if this world position is on our plane on a specific coordinates of our plane and only then we are going to call this and I'm gonna paste it here and instead of this else statement we're just gonna say if we are not moving building if moving building equals to false then you can use moving otherwise we are moving the building so let's pass the variables here the first one is this build position build base position and of course we need an x y rows and columns which is the coordinates of our building and the size of our building so we can get those values by accessing building dot instance but first we need to make those variables public let's go to the building and as you can see these values are currently private so i'm just going to create a getter for them and let me just copy this and use it for the rest of them so this is going to be current y and these two are going to be rows and columns Now these values are public and we can go back to our camera controller and access them using building that instance. So we are going to pass columns rows current y and current x of our building and we get that position and we're going to check to see our finger has been pressed on that building then and only then we can drag the building around so let's go back to the unity editor and check the result now we have our game view i'm gonna go to the shop and place a gold mon on the screen so as you can see whenever i click anywhere on the map i can move around but whenever I click on this and drag it around, the building is going to be dragged around. But for some reason, it's moving on the wrong direction. So let's check this out. I'm going to go back to the client and the problem should be on update function. So let's go there. So here we say if we are building and we are moving the building, update grid position and it is a function in our building. Let's check this out. So let me just replace the X with Z and replace Z with X and let's check this out, see if it got fixed. so yeah this is kind of weird it shouldn't be behaving like this so let me go back to the code and let's say here minus z i'm gonna just save it and let's play it shop gold and yeah it got fixed i can drag around the building and just like that we have a building placement for some reason I had to reverse these values and add a minus to my z direction. I'll definitely look into this but for now it works so let's not mess around with it. And I think this is enough for this video. Hopefully in the next video we're gonna create a couple of buttons around here so whenever we click one of those buttons the building gets placed and if we click on the other one the building gets cancelled. We should also create and function to change this red color based on the availability of the grid area. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thank you very much for watching this video.